All right, welcome to the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. I'm Aaron Brightman coming to you with my rapid reaction. Minutes after Rutgers defeated Georgetown 71 to 60. It is Wednesday night, late, uh, and uh big win for Rutgers. Obviously, an opponent on paper. They were favored, you know, I think they were about a nine and a half, ten point favorite. Georgetown's not good. And the score was certainly not indicative of how much Rutgers dominated in the second half. They were up big in the first half. I believe it was 31-18. Georgetown made a run back. Led uh, Rutgers led 38-32 at the break. And the second half, they, they broke it wide open. And it was kind of a weird second half where it was like Rutgers was pretty much up, up like 15, 16 points the whole second half. But actually went like five minutes without a field goal, um, was kind of inconsistent for the free throw line. Uh, so they never completely knocked Georgetown out of it. They didn't completely blow them out. But uh, it was pretty much the issue was no longer in doubt. I would, you know, I'd say by midway second half, if not earlier, it never felt like Georgetown was going to be able to put a run together. There were certainly some encouraging things tonight. I thought what you saw when Rutgers was at its best, it was exactly what I had hoped and kind of talked about, which was Derek Simpson and Noah Fernandes taking control. Uh, they both looked really good tonight at times. Noah uh, struggled in the first half with a shot, but uh, started hitting some in the second half. And I thought just, you know, dictated the pace really well, uh, shared the basketball. He went a little ice, so maybe a little bit too much. But um, Simpson was very good uh, and six of six on the foul line. He hasn't missed a free throw all year, but he led Rutgers with 15 points. Also uh, led them with four assists. Uh, Noah had 10 second half points. He had five rebounds. He had three assists. So both of them were really productive. I thought defensively Rutgers was really strong uh, tonight. It's funny because Georgetown had been so bad at defending inside the arc and Rutgers made them pay from the outside tonight uh, as a team, nine of 24 from three point range. So 38% pretty good, um, which was great to see. That was an encouraging sign. Uh, Noah was two of six. Also made one that didn't count and had one that was on a walk. So he, he started to find his touch in the second half, which was key. He looked, you know, he just showed some rust, especially in that first half. It was just short and tight. But you could see he was starting to feel in the second half. So that's really encouraging for Rutgers. Uh, you also had Hyatt. Listen, give him credit. He was 3 of 6 from 3. Uh, he uh, had 12 points, 7 boards. And you know what? He's playing with a confidence that he's he's – He's a lot smoother out there. You know, he's even that steal at the end of the, or the, he knocked it away with like, you know, not much left in the game. Obviously it was over and he, uh, he just was very calm and, and, and under control in making a good defensive play. So I thought that that was, um, he, he just, he looked the part tonight, you know, he's putting together back to back to back good performances. He did not force it too much tonight. That was key. So uh, encouraging from him uh, for sure. Uh, as a team, you know, Rutgers shot 45%. They held Ill, uh, Georgetown to 35%. Held them, they were 7 to 25 from three. You know, the game wouldn't even been close if it wasn't for the foul line. Georgetown was 17 of 21, 81%. Rutgers was just 14 of 24, 58%. Um, but turnovers was a huge thing. Rutgers first 21 turnovers at Georgetown. They profited with 25 points off of them, 25-12. Uh, so only 10 turnovers for Rutgers. That was solid. And then um, rebounding was the big concern. You know, Georgetown kind of owned them. And that's why, you know, Cliff got two fouls early in the first half. He sat and then Pico brought him back in with like six and a half minutes to go because Rutgers was just getting torched on the boards. Um, they, they were better in the second half. And uh, let's see. Second chance points, Georgetown was only up 11-7, even though they were 11-6 on the boards. Uh, but Rutgers was minus 11 on the boards, which, you know, that's a concern for sure uh, in Big Ten play. This team has a rebound better. Obviously, Moat Mag coming back whenever that may be. Austin Williams didn't play tonight. Uh, he was he was banged up. Uh, so they only had nine scholarship players today. I thought it was interesting. Pico really tightened the rotation tonight. Really just seven players played. Oscar got nine minutes. Troll got three. Everyone else played uh, at least like 20 plus minutes. Um, I think it was, let's see, pulling out the home stats. 
Uh, Minutes-wise, yeah, you had uh, Derek at 29, uh, Noah had 33, Andre 31, Cliff 27, Antoine 27, and Jermichael Davis 21. So let's talk about the bench. Jermichael Davis and Gavin Griffiths. Griffiths only played 19 minutes. They were both fantastic in the first half. You know, they, they gave Rutgers a real lift. Jermichael Davis played under control. Uh, neither, you know, I think Pico just, the way the second half went, it was kind of weird, you know, just with all the fouling and everything. There's a ton of fouls in this game. And he just kind of rode the starters. So Griffiths and Davis, though, had made big contributions in the first half. Uh, Gavin, he did have a dunk late, but uh, he had 10 points in the first half. Uh, Davis finished with nine. He was four seven from the floor, had a couple rebounds, had a couple steals. He was excellent defensively, especially up top, you know, just perimeter defense, ball pressure. He was really strong. Rutgers had a press pretty much, pretty much the whole game. I thought that was a great call strategically. Uh, Georgetown, you know, does not have a lot of good guards. Uh, and, um, also just in terms of their depth is, is low. So I think they were trying to wear them out. And uh, that was that, – that was I, I really like that they were doing that. It's encouraging. I think Rutgers is going to have to press at times. It would be very interesting to see how they look once Mag does get back, if he plays at the front of that 1-3-1. One, one. Uh, or, you know, you take pre you take chances with your, your guards up front, and then you have Cliff and Mag defending the rim. So there's a lot of options there that could be available pretty soon. Um, I thought the energy good, was good tonight. You know, they, they got off to a relatively good start. They they took took the hit, you know, the stomach punch hit from Georgetown, and they bounced back. And then I thought the way they responded in the second half, the way this team came out with urgency, again, guard play I thought was really strong tonight. And that's that's what you need. That's what you need against high major competition. So that was uh, a, a really good sign uh, for them. Uh, in addition, uh, let's see. Uh, Wolf, you know, a solid five points. Only took a shot from the field. You know, struggling from the foul line a little bit, three to six. But he had four boards. Um, you know, four different players had two steals. Simpson, Fernandes, Hyatt, and Davis all had two steals. Cliff had four blocks. Uh, he had eight points, four or seven from the floor. Just uh, six rebounds. You know, he's, he's still trying to find his way. He doesn't have great touch around the rim. And I think Rutgers is still learning how to get the ball to him. You know, they were able to get penetration at times, but, you know, Georgetown was in his zone a lot, and they were really keeping Rutgers on the perimeter uh, and did not get to the rim too often. They're still learning how to get the ball to Cliff. They had a couple of bad passes. I think it was Noah, um, you know, who tried to. It was a little bit of a forced job. Um, you know, Cliff's, Cliff had some emphatic dunks tonight. Defensively, he was excellent. Uh but they're still trying to find a rhythm. You know, they're still trying to find a rhythm. Uh, they were missing Mag tonight again. They were missing Austin Williams. Uh, and I think you're seeing, you know, the rust fall off of Noah Fernandes. He looked much better in the second half. But the thing is, even when he doesn't play great in terms of, like, when he misses a lot of shots, he doesn't make mistakes. And he, he had a poise out there tonight that I thought was really encouraging for how he ran the offense. Simpson looked good at times, too. You know, when he took control, he had command as well. Uh, so they were doing more uh, screening actions with the cliff up top. Uh, so that was good. As also, um, it was just, it was a strong performance. I thought it was a good game plan. I thought they executed it well. Uh, you know, Georgetown is not going to get you any flowers, you know, for, in terms of praise. There were, I think, 177 on Kempom coming in. But that's okay. You know, that was a, a dominant win over a team you should. Uh, do that again. So that that again, that's another positive step as well. Now you're three and one. Now you have Howard on Saturday, and then you have, I guess, nine days off. Uh, then all Thanksgiving week off, and then they host St. Peter's, and then the crucial three game stretch where they host Illinois. They're at Wake Forest, and then they're at Seton Hall. So that will really tell us a lot about this team. Um, Again, we've talked about depth and being improved, and they only played seven guys tonight. Uh, obviously, Mag and Williams, you, know, you need those guys back. You need that 11 available uh, for sure. So um, that will be interesting to watch for. Obviously, Rutgers doesn't want to have too much wear and tear this early in the season. But um, it's a work in progress. It seems a work in progress, and I think that uh, there were a lot of encouraging signs tonight. I think that um, – 
they were able to take control when they needed to, and they never really relinquished. They never fully blew out Georgetown, but they never let them really back into the game. It never got to single digits that late in the game. Um, I want to see if I'm missing any other interesting stats here, uh, just in terms of, uh, let's see, transition points, 20 to 9. So that was impressive. They were able to run effectively 26 to 20 points in the paint. Bench points, 21 to 6. That was impressive. Um, and, uh, yeah, 21 turnovers. That's amazing, uh, that they were able to force that. And, uh, that's what they're going to have to do against backcourts that they have really shifty, quick, athletic guards between Noah and Jamichael, uh, and Derek. I mean, they're going to, they, they can wreak havoc defensively. So, uh, overall, you know, solid performance, uh, certainly some flaws, But I think overall, just the way – and I thought the team shared the basketball well. There was good balance out there. Uh, There was not much hero ball. You know, uh, there's a little bit, but not too much. And it was kind of warranted after you're hot. Um, It wasn't random. So, uh, Rutgers, 3-1, and happy with this. And I hope you are too. I'm very tired. You can probably see right now. I've been up since 4 in the morning for work. So, uh, I'll plenty more. I'm going to do a separate uh, either article or podcast on the whole rack uh, survey that came out today, renovations and all that. Uh, And then I have two football podcasts coming out as well, well, one with Lance Glenn and the other with David Anderson. So stay tuned for that. And, uh, again, work in progress to this team. Positive steps forward tonight. Uh, Solid win over a bad high major team, but a a win nonetheless. And uh, they just got to keep building. Thanks for listening and watching.